In this tutorial, we will discuss how to create a fountain in Blender, and interestingly, no fluid physics is involved here. Fluid physics is a costly thing and maybe an overkill for this, so we have created it using very simple techniques. Let's first delete this cube and add here an ICO sphere or a UV sphere. Then we have to resize it, maybe by a factor of 0.1. Now go to this particles tab and add a new particle system. We will come back to this section later. Let's first unhide the velocity section. We need to add a velocity along the positive Z axis since we want the particles to move up in this direction. So we'll change it to say 10, which is roughly same as the gravitational force in the opposite direction. So the particles will move up and the backbone of our fountain is ready. You can see that after moving up, the particles are spreading this way. And this effect is caused by this normal velocity. We can even increase it slightly. It will give us a little more spread or dispersion. So once we are satisfied with the physics, we need to create actual water droplets instead of these little white balls. And to convert them into water drops, we have to first create a model like this, which is an icosphere with an elongated height. We have created a transparent material so that the model looks like a large water drop, and in the particles tab, let's expand the section called render. First, we have to change this render as, and select the object option. Then in the instance field, we have to pick up this sphere or the water model. And please ensure that this object scale option is selected. Now we can hide this water model, for render as well as for the viewport. So the particles will now look like water drops, but we may need to control their size as well. So select the icosphere or the water model, and in the object properties, we have to reduce these scale factors. We have set the Z scale factor a little higher, in order to make it taller in height. Now if we run it again, it will look perfect, but you may want to increase the number of these droplets, so you need to select the source object, and in the particles settings, you can change this number to say 5000. And we have to change this end frame number to match it with the end frame of our animation, so we'll change this to say 250. Then we need to change this lifetime, we can set it to say 100, it has to be more than the time it takes to travel along this path, and then disappear below the water surface. So everything now looks perfect, we have sufficient water drops with a suitable material, now we'll apply this method in a complete scene for a fountain. We have created this water reservoir in a blend file, and the sphere, or the emitter, that will emit the water particles, is hidden inside this lotus. This is the sphere that will emit the particles, we have enabled a particle system for this object, exactly as we saw in our proof of concept. Now if we run this animation, the water particles will first move up, and then they will fall down and hit the surface of this water. This water body is nothing but a simple plane with a transparent material, and we have also enabled dynamic paint for this plane. The type of the dynamic paint is set as canvas for this plane, and this dynamic paint is also enabled for the particles, but in this case the type is set as brush instead of canvas. So when the water drops fall on this water, they will create here a lot of ripple effect. If you are not very familiar with dynamic paint, you can check these tutorials where we have discussed dynamic paint and how to create ripple effect on water. The tutorial links are given below in the video description. So if we run the animation, the water particles will drop here and they will create a nice ripple effect as expected. If we switch over to the solid view mode, we can see it in the real time speed. So this is how we can create a fountain in Blender using particle physics. And remember that the lighting in the scene should be bright enough, only then the fountain will look good because the water droplets are made of a transparent material that only reflects the ambient light. So we have used an HDRI texture, and we have increased its strength to 2. This HDRI tutorial link is also given in the video description, and we have also enabled the ray tracing option. Now, we want these particles to disappear as soon as they hit this water surface. So select the particles and go to the particles tab. We have to scroll down to the physics section and expand the section called deflection. Then we need to enable this option called die on hit. Then for the water surface, let's go to the physics tab. And in addition to this dynamic paint, we have to also enable the collision physics. Please remember that their order is very important. We must have the dynamic paint enabled before the collision physics, otherwise it won't work. Now we can bake everything using this option. And once complete, we can render the scene. You should get an output like this, you can customize it as needed, and if you are a member of this channel, you can also download this blend file. Next week, we'll discuss how to create a musical fountain that goes up and down following any music of your choice.
So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.